Monsignor Stephen Rossetti was recently in St. Louis to be with us at the St. Louis Marian Conference. He is the author of Diary of an American Exorcist, available through Sophia Institute Press. Monsignor, thank you for being with us on Roadmap to Heaven this morning. My pleasure, Adam. Now, Monsignor, uh, one of the things that you did at the conference, you gave some wonderful talks, but you also had a healing and deliverance mm-hmm. service. And I think for most of us, especially in this day and age, we recognize what healing is and even that we are in need of healing. But for many of us, deliverance might still be an unfamiliar term. It might just be the title of a movie from way back when or the latest app on your phone to order takeout without leaving your couch. But in terms of our Catholic faith, deliverance is a very uh, powerful spiritual reality And it implies that there is something we need to be delivered from. So I was wondering if we could just start by asking that question, what is deliverance, who's being delivered, and from what? Well, as an exorcist, we cast out demons from people who are fully possessed. But most people, thank God, are not. But all of us are tempted by uh, Satan. And some people, more than a few actually, have uh, some of the stronger presences of Satan. They're not possessed, but they have some... Uh, maybe evil spirits that are are influencing their lives. And so this deliverance uh, casts them out. Uh, So it can be very freeing for a lot of people. So when we talk about sometimes, you know, say you you struggle with the vice of unchastity, that Mm -hmm. you you struggle with lust, and it just feels like everywhere you go, or at some point every day, as if somebody's Tapping you on the shoulder, saying, "Hey, take a look at take a look at that young woman over there, Mister Man." Here, uh, that's part of what you're talking about. Then, well, there's a difference between ordinary temptations, which everyone has. Uh, Satan tempts everyone, uh, versus a little stronger presence where Satan's into is what we call his extraordinary uh, action, and he might be oppressing or obsessing someone. For example, all of us have sexual temptations because it's part of being a fallen humanity. But when Satan gets involved more intensely, uh, then they can be very powerful. Or or he can influence uh, your mind and really put some really negative, wrong negative thoughts in your mind. We call those demonic obsessions. So sometimes this extraordinary activity of Satan can be a pretty strong influence for evil in our lives. But the power of Christ uh, casts him out. I would imagine that more than a few of us then wonder at times if this is the reality, you know, number one, how does it happen to people? And, and number two, and probably most importantly, how do we, how do we avoid it? You know, I, I, I don't think that I want to go through my day saying, gee, I hope I get to be the special target of Satan today. <laughs> well, for, I tell, I tell us to priest, you know, they, some, sometimes people will say, or pre, priests will say, well, I don't want to say these deliverance prayers. I want to rile Satan. Well, you got to be kidding. I mean, if, if you've never upset Satan in your life, are you really a Christian? If we live a, a holy life, the Satan will attack us. It happens to all the great saints. When you look at, like, Padre Pio and Catherine of Siena and all the great saints, they were so holy that uh, they were a target from Satan, and then Satan would actually beat them up. Now, that, thank God that doesn't happen to most of us. But Satan will attack you if you're living a holy life. Now, how do we protect ourselves? Very simply, remember that trust in Jesus. Jesus is Lord, live a holy life, go to confession, go to Mass, uh, don't uh, commit any serious sins, and God forbid, don't do anything at the occult, magic and Ouija boards, all that kind of stuff. Don't, don't invite Satan into your life. But if you don't do that stuff and you live a holy life, uh, you're, you're pretty protected. You know, we, we had a, an example the hard way the other night. We live in an urban area, and unfortunately, if you forget to lock your doors on your vehicle, odds are good that at some point your vehicle will be ransacked, and they go through looking for money and, and whatnot. And the other morning, I found out the hard way. I left the doors unlocked, oh. mm-hmm. and so what happened? The vehicle was ransacked. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised. So it makes, it makes a lot of sense that in the spiritual realm, don't open the door for Satan. Right. Don't leave the door unlocked for Satan. Use the tools our Lord has given us to shut the door and lock the door. That's what people don't realize today. I mean, they're doing all the sorts of magic. Some people say, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a white witch. I'm a good witch. No, no. When you do magic and occult stuff, you're explicitly inviting Satan into your life, whether you know it or not. So stop all that magic, uh, witchcraft, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, uh, go to the sacraments and pray. Pray the rosary. What a wonderful, powerful prayer of the rosary.
Indeed. Now, Monsignor, before we wrap up here, I, I think one of the things that I often encounter in talking with people about uh, demonic oppression and in all of these matters is a fear that we don't want to know too much about it because we don't want to endlessly be afraid or wonder or entertain these things, but we should have a healthy appreciation, if I understand correctly, for everything you're talking about. So if, if we want to know more or, or we think we need to know more, what are some resources that we can use to learn about deliverance and oppression and everything you've been sharing with us about today? Well, as you say, Adam, we don't want to walk around in fear. We People talk to me, why is an exorcist? You must be frightened. No, I'm not. Jesus is Lord. We see the power of Christ. We just throw a little holy water on the evil spirits and they go screaming or lift up a cross and behold the cross of Jesus. I can't stand it. So we, we're confident in the power of Christ. Now, there are resources. We I, I wrote a book, Diary of American Exorcist. We have a website, catholicexorcism.org. And, of course, the church and the catechism. The, the catechism teaches about these uh, realities, a little bit anyway. So follow what the church teaches. The church teaches truly. But always remember that the death and resurrection of Jesus has smashed Satan's kingdom, and Jesus is Lord. And I would imagine if someone has a, a serious concern that there's a very serious matter, that that's something that they can go to their, their parish priest or their diocese for further assistance and further uh, right, you should, they should go to their parish priest for, for help. Also, uh, we have a, a monthly online deliverance session. We have 15,000 people sign up every month from all over the world. So uh, people have said this has been very helpful for them. Uh, but, of course, more serious uh, infestations, then you'll, you should have a priest help you. Well, Monsignor, this has been very insightful and, and a great reminder for us on so many of these things, especially locking the doors, you know, mm -hmm. in the, in your spiritual life and, and be on the right side of the door. As I told my daughter when she asked me about witchcraft the other day and whether or not there were good witches, I said there are two sides, Satan's side and God's side. We know who wins. Which team do you want to be on? And yeah. she, she said the winning team. Could I ask you to uh, close our time together with a prayer, Monsignor? I asked the blessed... Uh, Virgin Mary, to spread her mantle over each and every one of you, all of your loved ones, all your possessions. May the blood of Jesus wash you clean. May the holy angels surround you. In the name of Jesus, may you be healed and liberated and delivered. In the name of Jesus, may you all be at peace. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Monsignor Stephen Rossetti, thank you so much for being with us on Roadmap to Heaven this morning. Friends, we're going to take a break, but don't go anywhere. <laughs> 